Yesterday was a very, very somber press conference at the White House. It was informative. There were some myths that were dispelled, such as the uh, very frightening news that there was a study that said that the coronavirus could linger in a room up to 27 feet. Dr. Fauci sort of uh, poo-pooed that and said that is a, uh, a bit of an exaggeration and not likely. We've got some good news right now. The FDA has authorized two-minute coronavirus tests. Very, very exciting news, but not so not exciting and not uh, any reason to be upbeat, frankly. And it's why we're in this together as Americans are the very bleak um, and sobering predictions that we could see between 100 and 240,000 coronavirus deaths in America, even with the social distancing that we're doing. According to the scientists, we could see as many as 2.2 million if we didn't do anything and just kept going on uh, business as usual. I believe most Americans, not all, but most Americans are now fully embracing the idea that this is a much deadlier virus than the flu, that it is much more contagious than the flu, and that these very draconian, um, extreme actions we are taking, because we've essentially shut down most of the country, and, and we know it. Uh, we're having to live with it. We're having to embrace it. Uh, we're having to accept it, because without it, we could see millions of people die. Now, you know, you could roll your eyes and say, it's never going to happen, Gallagher. You're being an alarmist. I got a little bit of that a few weeks ago. I don't get very much of that now. Um, I do believe that the experts probably um, try to jolt us into um, a new reality with maybe dramatic numbers in order to get our attention. Not to say that they don't believe their numbers. Um, I, I think they do. But there is, there's a lot of reason to, to, to appreciate if we can change the way we live for a few weeks, a few more weeks, maybe it's four, I don't know, maybe it's eight. I hope it's not. I'm trying to, 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 to envision a scenario where things are pretty much back to normal in, uh, in May, and I admit I don't really see that. But I don't know. I mean, I've said to you from day one, we know what we don't know. We don't have a way of knowing exactly what the future brings and how this country is going to respond. But make no mistake about it, the, these numbers are climbing. Yesterday was the milestone of 3,000 deaths. Today it's over 4,000 deaths here in the United States. We had over 1,000 people die. Um, we are, of course, and I don't like the comparison it, it's it's kind of a silly comparison. We now have more deaths than the Americans who were lost on 9/11. Uh, you know that's a that's a talking point for TV. There's a lot of stuff on TV right now that doesn't matter. Um, and I and I don't, I don't see this say this to be a jerk. CNN doesn't matter. They're irrelevant. Don't don't get all up in arms about you, you know. I would play some clips once in a while from CNN to show you what a Trump-hating network and a conservative-hating network sounds like. And many of you would say, come on, Mike, we don't want to hear them. We don't watch them. Don't even pay any attention to them. And, and now I, I really probably, I probably recognize that pushback more than ever. Yesterday was one of the most illuminating, important, essential White House task force press briefings I've ever seen. I've seen most of them, listened to most of them. Yesterday, I watched the entire thing practically from start to finish. It was so important to see that exchange. There wasn't a lot of tussling between President Trump and Jim Acosta. They were respectful to one another. It was somber. It was informative. A um, couple of moments of levity, Trump with his signature sense of humor. Uh, but it was, it was powerful. It was powerful. The president addressed the nation in a way that Frankly, he hasn't very often through this crisis. He was pretty somber. He was not quite so um, loosey-goosey with going off script, but he was very powerful. And he stood there as long as the reporters wanted him to be there. The thing went two hours and 15 minutes. And I read 
that, and I know it's true, this is what CNN did. When the commander-in-chief was at the podium for the beginning of the briefing, they wouldn't carry it. Only when he left the podium and the scientists like Burks and Fauci came up, that's when CNN joined the press conference. They, In other words, they completely boycotted and blacked out the president of the United States. Had they carried it, it's almost like they're very prescient. They know what they're doing because had they carried it, their viewers, many of whom I'm sure hate the president, along with everybody on air over there, would have seen a very serious, eloquent, passionate, heartfelt, somewhat emotional president. In other words, CNN would have seen a side of President Trump that a lot of people really want to see, but they didn't see it because CNN refused to carry it. Now, I'm not going to go on a tirade. They can do whatever the heck they want. I don't care if they play polka music over there. They mean nothing to me. I, I am the the only news out of CNN that that leaves my heart heavy is the report that Chris Cuomo, one of their anchors, uh, has tested positive for COVID-19. And like I said yesterday when the news came out, my heart goes out to him, his family, his friends, everybody in his circle, certainly even his coworkers. That's a different matter. That's a very personal matter. I don't care what your political ideology is. I, I, my heart is heavy for anybody who's having to face this frightening virus. As for their professional actions, I'll leave it to you to decide the, the enormity of a major, well, I say major in quotes, cable news network boycotting the president of the United States. I mean, disgusting, reprehensible, vile, un-American, doesn't even begin to start to describe that decision. And again, it bit them in the butt because of all days for them to pull that stunt. Yesterday was one of the most powerful days we've ever seen. I'm going to play a lot from the uh, the event yesterday. I want you to hear pieces of it because it was strong. It was powerful. It was enlightening. It was sobering. It was enormous.